All right, so a question I get asked frequently is, what do we do with the chicken bones after we're done skewering? All right, let's go. Three, two, one, go. All right, so it's been 30 minutes. The soup has been simmering. How's it looking? Ready to make some ramen? Smells good. Smells good. taste that it's the chicken it's very clean hey yaki gang yakitori guy here today i'm here with my friend go ramen in his ramen garage and we're about to make some chicken ramen chicken and one of the most frequent questions i get from yaki gang is what do we do with the chicken bones once we're done skewering with all the leftover bones we want to make soup out of this and what better way to make soup than to enjoy it with some ramen yakitori and ramen go pretty well together a lot of ramen shops were birthed from yakitori shops because they had so many bones that they had to get rid of. Let's make some ramen. Yeah, let's make some ramen. As I break down this chicken to make yakitori, let me talk about Keizo Shimamoto. Over a decade ago, he started a ramen blog sharing his research and love for ramen, trying and reviewing hundreds if not thousands of ramen bowls in the US and Japan. Always looking to spread the innovation and creativity for ramen, Keizo is also the creator of Ramen Burger which although not traditional, helped bring forward ramen into the attention of more foodies. What's this? Right, What's this? this dirty show you. Keizo is considered one of the top ramen heads by many, not just in the online ramen space, but in the physical realm, as many ramen lovers from around the country will come and enjoy his ramen at Ramen Shack in New York. And this will be for the chashu. Nice. Break this, put this in here. I remember seeing Keizo on Conan showing the world how to eat ramen. I thought that was a really cool breakout moment for ramen culture. Squeeze this, we're gonna pinch these and then just something like this, right through the center. Yeah! If you notice more ramen shops in America over the last decade, especially in smaller towns, Keizo's dream and work to spread ramen definitely paved the way. I look up to Keizo as he's definitely one of the handful of pioneers that helped bring ramen to a wider global audience. The same dream I have for yakitori. Hopefully 10 years from now, with the wider spread of yakigang, yakitori in America can be where ramen is now and every city will have a real yakitori shop. Kind of just pinch into it. I'm gonna knead it into a log. Making some shisomaki right here. Bam! It's like a nigiri. Right here. <laughs> I, I need to do a video with like a sushi guy. <laughs> Alright, we're removing the innards, all the organs, because it's gonna add murkiness and stinkiness to the soup. We want it clean. So we just broke down one whole chicken and got these skewers. Now with all the leftover bones, we want to make soup out of this. And what better way to make soup than to enjoy it with some ramen. So what's the best way to make ramen soup out of these chicken bones? So yeah, just take all the leftover bones from the yakitori and put it in some water and boil it. Is it pretty much simple as that? Simple as that. All right, so let's go for it. So what do we need to do? So we're going to first place the bones into the pot and make sure it's just on the bottom right here. Then we're just gonna cover it with water. So this is about maybe 600 grams of chicken bones. And you can do one to one, but since we're only using one chicken and we're trying to get as much as we can for a bowl of ramen for both of us, I'm gonna do two to one water. So we just add in and just make sure the bones are covered. All right, so we got two liters of cold water with the one chicken carcass. All right, fire is on and we're just going to wait for it to boil. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. We see some scum, so we're going to scoop that out. So we're getting all the scum off, or as much as we can. Yeah, all the big scum. And we'll let it boil for maybe about a minute or so and, and wait for more scum to come out. And what's the purpose in ramen soup making of removing the scum? So the scum is what creates the the sami, which is like the smell, the bad smell, and also it will make the soup cloudier. This was a chicken ramen served at the end of the meal at Yakitori Moe West. Just look how clear and golden the soup is. So we want to keep it nice and clean, take out the scum, make it taste good. Once we take out the scum, we're going to lower the heat to a simmer and we'll add a piece of kombu. Is this all the kombu we need? Bigger, smaller? Yeah, this is good. It's about three grams for this one chicken. Yeah, just a little bit more umami. Do we need to mix it in or just that's it? Yeah, just push it. 
And is it pretty traditional to put kombu in a chicken soup? Yeah, we're not gonna be blending it with the dashi, so we just wanna put some of that umami element in there. And what's umami? Umami is MSG. <laughs> umami is what gives Japanese food that flavor. It's hard to describe. It's, it's sort of like that sixth sense of flavor. Umami is often described as savoriness or deliciousness, but it's definitely the deeper flavor in food that's full of glutamates. It's that flavor yeah. that makes you say, wow, this is so right. good when you take that bite of pizza or slurp on a bowl of ramen. Eating ramen with the master here. <laughs> so normally when I do my chicken soup, I would just put in the onion trimmings into my soup. Is that a good idea for this yeah, chicken soup? Yeah, no waste. Let's All right, so yeah, these are just trimmings. I didn't use this for my negima, it's just trimmings. Just gonna break it up, throw it in there. All right, so we remove the scum, put in the kombu and the negi, the onions. What next? That's it, lower the heat to a simmer and make sure it doesn't overboil and then we'll cover it and wait about four hours. But make sure it's cracked open a little bit so we can breathe. That's it? Yep. That's All right, let's go make some yakitori. Let's go. Bincho Girl recently updated their yakitori rods. So this is the original one, this is a new one. It's about two millimeters wider in, in both directions and definitely heavier. I'm gonna be using this today. The idea is with the thicker rods, it's gonna be heavier. Definitely you can feel it, so it shouldn't slide around as much. So we'll test it out and find out. Negima! Oh. Crispy skin! Damn, crispy! <laughs> All right, so it's been about three and a half hours since we put this on the stove. All right, it's smelling good. How's it looking so far? It's looking good, it's nice and clear. Uh, you got a little chicken fat on the top right here. I think it's almost about done, maybe 30 more minutes. 30 more minutes and we'll eat some ramen. Yep. All right, so it's been 30 minutes, the soup has been simmering. How's yep. it looking? Ready oh, to make some ramen? Good. Smells good. Okay, so we're just gonna ladle the soup over here and strain it, gently. So we got all the toppings for the ramen. So we got the chopped negi, we got the binjotan grilled chicken breast, the aji tamago and the noodles. What goes into the ramen soup? So we have the soup that we made from breaking down the chicken and taking the bones and just boiling it for four hours. Other than this, we got the shoyu tare and usually an aroma oil that goes into that. But since your mother tare is full of that nice aroma from the chicken drippings, and also you get that binchotan aroma in there too. And what I did was I took your mother tare and I blended it one to one ratio with some koi to show you. And that's it, it's gonna be a simple show you ramen here. All right, so if you guys have followed along with the recipe for my tare, basically just do one to one of tare and more soy sauce and you got your ramen tare.
let's go ahead and start boiling the noodles. All right, what kind of noodles are these? These are just your standard straight noodles. I do it more like a Tokyo Chuka Soba style. And so you made it on this machine? Made it on this machine. So this would be a standard noodle for maybe shoyu ramen? Yeah, for recent Tokyo shoyu ramen, you got the straight noodle, a little bit of egg in here. Nice and chewy, but still firm. All right, so we got the tare. And I'm just gonna put a little black pepper. And of course, All right, what's the best way to eat ramen? I like to take a sip of the soup okay. and then slurp the noodles. Let's do that. Itadakimasu! Itadakimasu! <laughs> you can taste that, just the chicken. It's very clean. We got the noodles. Pinchotan chicken, chicken breast, very soft. So good. I had aluminum foil on top, so it's letting it smoke. So the smoke flavor is definitely in the chicken. <laughs> so good. Oishi means good. Mm. Got these eggs. I marinated these this morning. So. All right, photo. Yakitori ramen photo. Yeah. All right. So we just concluded our yakitori meal with our shime ramen. Basically, the shime means closer, and ramen is definitely one of the best ways to just comfortably just close out the stomach, close out the night. We have all the small skiers, and at the end, I get the hot soup and the noodles. I feel stuffed. Yeah, me too. I'm actually surprised it came out so good. Like I've never used your mother tare before, just ramen tare. So if you guys are making yakitori at home, you have all the ingredients, you have the bones, you have the tare, and the noodles. What can they use for noodles? I work for Myojo, you can always go to Mitsua and buy some noodles from the Myojo packs, or you know, hit me up, I don't know, maybe I'll have some to sell. So Mitsua, that's a Japanese grocery store. I've definitely seen Myojo noodles at different Asian grocery stores, so check that out. If not, there's a lot of resources on the internet on how to make ramen, so maybe check those out. But if you want to learn more about what Go Ramen is doing, hit him up on Instagram, Twitter, and your blog. And you have an announcement? Yeah, Ramen Shack is coming back. It's out on Capistrano this summer, so hopefully you can make it out there. I'll have all the nostalgic bowls on there, plus some new ones. Yakitori Ramen? Next story ramen, let's do it. <laughs> all right, all right. And for others, if you guys do want to learn more about sort of how to make ramen at home, my focus is on yakitori, but we do have a mutual friend, Way of Ramen. Check out his YouTube channel, Way of Ramen. He pretty much shows you everything we did today about making soup, even making noodles, making the ajitama, the, the egg, all of that. He kind of shows you step by step how to make that. So definitely check that out. And hopefully Way of Ramen, you'll be doing some yakitori ramen soon. I love ramen, I love yakitori. Thank you, Go Ramen, for- Me too, I love ramen, I love yakitori. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We're for each other. <laughs> thank you for basically showing all the steps. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on the chicken ramen, which we made using the yakitori bones. If you guys like this video, make sure to give a thumbs up, write in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you really enjoyed this video, you can always donate a chicken. It helps support this channel. All right, that's it for today. See you guys in the next video. Bye, Yaki Yang. Bye, Yaki Yang.